All right, Bruce, let's talk about the Cavaliers and what their weaknesses may be in the playoffs. How do you beat the Cavaliers with all the weapons they have on the floor? Well, I think one of the ways you try to to get a win against this Cavaliers team is, is really attacking, driving, and kicking. It's basic basketball principles. But, you know, if there is a weakness that I say on this team is the fact that they haven't had a lot of time together to gel defensively. I like the additions that they do have as far as Timothy Mozgov down low and also Tristan Thompson down low to help out as well. But they just can't do it all by themselves. It takes the rotations and things like that. Understanding pick and roll coverages. There's been times this season where I've seen LeBron James making right rotation, but it's somebody behind him that's a little late and maybe late getting to a shooter. It's those little things in the playoffs that can either allow you to advance or go back home. Bruce, for the Cavaliers to beat Boston in this series, it seems pretty obvious that if the Cavaliers can get the ball down low where Boston has trouble defending in the low blocks, they should be able to, to take advantage of that. Do you agree? Man, I don't even know why you even asked me that question. <laughs> I'm going to tell, tell you why the Cavs are going to win. They lost the game by 30-some-odd points to the Boston Celtics. Now, I know the main ingredients didn't play. But that's on their mind right now. You know a lot of that time when Boston was celebrating and having a good old time? <laughs> them, those Cavs were sitting over there, uh-huh, okay, y'all yeah, want to celebrate now, huh? Okay, y'all go ahead and celebrate. We'll see who's celebrating in the next couple of weeks. So it, it's not even about establishing. It's going out and playing their style of basketball. I think this is a good game for Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love to really get their feet wet. It's not too much pressure. This is a game where, you know, it's going to be Cleveland Cavaliers, and I say it's a sweep. I understand people are going, no, you can't just say they're going to sweep. They're going to sweep the Celtics, and if they don't, I will grow an afro. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm with you. I think it's a sweep, too. But, hey, Bruce, when you look at, at playoff experience, and everyone wants to make a big deal about it. We've already talked about it in the past a little bit here. Everyone wants to say, well, Kevin Love hasn't played in, in the playoffs before. Kyrie Irving hasn't played. Uh, you got Della Vadova. You got Tristan Thompson. Does, is that totally overblown when you've got a team like the Cavaliers with a bunch of guys with experience on the, on the roster? Yeah, it is overblown as far as I'm concerned. I understand we say that early in the year as far as allowing this team to come together. You know, some of the different questions that people had was, how will they gel together? How will Kyrie Irving handle playing with LeBron James, who will hold the basketball late in the game because he understands how to put the ball in the right player's hands? How will Kevin Love react to not being the first, second, or third option like he was in, in Minnesota? So all those things have been answered thus far. It's no longer a situation of saying, yay, but they have no playoff experience. This team has seen the teams in the NBA, they've seen the best Every night that they're playing, they're getting the other team, other team's best play every single night. And so it's a different atmosphere. You heard Kyrie say it early on in the season when they played the Chicago Bulls. Hey, is this playoff atmosphere? Is this how it is? And they have enough veterans on that ball club to say, hey, you know what? We need to do things this way, that way. James Jones, Mike Miller, those guys, Sean Marion, those guys will be able to give them a little experience. And it's good for the Cleveland Cavaliers to have those type of players on the bench where it's not a threat of the minutes being played, but they're there because they want to help the guys to be better out there and be more comfortable. So it's not a matter of, oh, no, they have no playoff experience. This is one of the best teams in the NBA with the best player in the league. All right, we well, can say that for the players. Does it matter for the coach that he doesn't have any NBA experience in the playoffs in David Blatt? And, you know, earlier people were picking on this team saying this wasn't working right, especially when they were under 500 before they made the trades in the middle. People were pointing the finger at him. Uh, Cavs general manager uh, David Griffin said, look, you should be pointing the finger at me. Went out and made a couple trades, and they were able to gel. What's your take on David Blatt? My take on David Blatt is he's an experienced coach, but he's learning on the job as far as the NBA is concerned. He didn't have a lot of experience on the sidelines, but he has experience communicating with guys. And, you know, I know it's a big deal that's been, been blown up as far as LeBron James calling calls and making decisions on the floor. You know what? You want your best player to be able to make decisions on the floor. And I think this is where... He and LeBron James' relationship will grow even stronger now because he can truly lean on LeBron and say, hey, what is it that you see when it comes to going into the playoffs? And, and, you know, when you have that type of confidence from a coach, it only allows a player to feel that much more comfortable. And that's what you're going to see from LeBron James. He has learned so much as far as growing up 
in that area, wanting to bring a championship to the city of Cleveland and the state of Ohio. Now he's getting that opportunity to really take it all in and be more than just that player on the floor, but he's actually being that leader in that whole state, not just the community, but the state as well. All right, Bruce, last question for you. How far do you have the Cavaliers going in this thing? I have the Cavaliers going to the NBA Finals. I don't know if they're going to win in the NBA Finals, but I do think that they have the best chance to get to the NBA Finals. And, you know, you look at the makeup of this team. you got the best player in the world that understands the different intricacies of the games and the game that they, he'll have to take over early in the game to get everyone to follow his lead. But he'll also understand certain games where he can help others get going early in the game so that he can develop their confidence. I think with any team that LeBron James is on, you have to consider them one of the favorites as far as representing the East in the NBA Finals. Hey, Bruce, thanks a million for your time. We appreciate it. We look forward to seeing you here throughout the playoffs, and I owe you a steak when you come to town. I'm going to hold you to it. You got it. You got it. I pay my bets. I'm good. Thanks, Bruce.